give me toast. Hey. Peace. Oh no. Oh no. I should be stopping this. Oh dear. Yep. What a mess. That's not going to work. And welcome to Babs Travelling Yarns. Welcome to my little corner of the internet where I talk to you about my knitting, my spinning and my weaving and sometimes events that I go to, events that I've hosted and uh, it's been a long time since I spoke to you. Possibly six weeks. Is that right? That could be right. That could be right. Um, I have a feeling I want to put something on because this is a very kind of bright top and the lighting is a little bit intense. But I think we're gonna, would you wanna say hello? Look, this is Miss Toast. She's one of my co-hosts that comes on every so often. She's got a lovely little pink collar. She doesn't like to be held. She likes to karate chop me in the throat. Don't you, my dear? She is six months old-ish, give or take, and she is going to get her self neutered on Friday. Oh yeah! Just know what's gonna hit her. But then she'll be allowed outside, which will hopefully calm her down. No, that's not gonna calm her down. So this is my baby, Toast, who doesn't like to be held, but I hold her anyway. Okay. My beautiful baby. Um, yeah, so she's, she's, she's damn cute though. She's got a little beard and she likes to climb. So if you hear the climbing things, uh, that's, that's her. I'm not gonna stop her because life is too short to stop kittens from doing what they want to do. Aren't they? Oh, apart from eating yarn. She's very fond of the yarn. Very fond of the yarn. Too fond of the yarn. So I just wanted to say welcome, a huge massive welcome to everybody that, who has joined me in the last few weeks. I have gone from 12,000 followers to 14,000 followers super fast. I feel like it's something to do with just like like the numbers I think. Um, so I think it's very little to do with me. <laughs> Although if people want to subscribe, I mean, that's a good sign. Um, I want to thank everybody who has come over as a recommendation from somebody else, um, especially when people recommend the, um, um, sorry, the cats. Oh, there's a loom there and the cats are obsessed with the looms. Um, yes, yeah, so especially people who have come from recommendations from, um, the jogless join video which has been a runaway success. I'm so delighted that so many people are, are getting um, use out of that video and that they're finding it useful because I certainly find, find it incredibly useful when I first discovered the technique. I did not invent the technique one bit um, but I am delighted that it's uh, the video is able to help a lot of people. A lot of people seem to uh, find it confusing um, that uh, around certain areas of a pattern say 
but um, most of the time it works really well for simple stocking out in the round for like for the body of a sweater when you're trying to not make it kind of um, trying to make a line across it if you if you are confused about what I'm talking about the video is down in my downloads just, just below if you want to find out more um so I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody who has joined in the past couple of uh, in the past couple of weeks it's lovely to have you here I am currently knitting as I speak to you which is a bad idea because I'm just at a bit where toast oh I'm sorry oh, my fault I left a thing dangling which means that it's like crack cocaine to her yes yes it is so um, I've, I want to talk about a couple of different things. First off, the winners of the last episode. Um, so I had my last episode was my 100th episode and I have a lot of prizes here to give away. Ah. So I'm going to announce them. I used the random YouTube comment generator and it was all the comments underneath. I think I got 430 something entries. Thank you so much. That's giant. Um, it's quite handy actually because when someone says, oh, just comment down below to win, it's quite easy because it's just there. You don't have to go somewhere else, which is really nice. Um, so the first winner is Jacqueline Robertson. Um, Jacqueline Robertson says, love the podcast and congratulations on your 100. I too made my own blending board, much cheaper. And I also pyrographed um, my name and glued sheep and knitting wool charms down to the side to personalize it. So the pyrography is like when you burn in like um, decorations using like a an element, I suppose. I don't know how, what, what that's called, but um, that's fabulous. Here's to 100 more. Yay! thank you so much so um Jacqueline you win the higgledy colorway from my babbles yarns this is in the dk so this is a um this is a dk weight skein of yarn which is one that I dyed very specially and there are a few of these actually still available but I haven't opened the shop yet but if anyone is interested in getting some to contact me I do have a few left so these were actually really popular at the retreat that I just had so that was really nice but I think I have one or two or maybe three maybe four I can't remember I put it all away it's in boxes behind you um so that's you Jacqueline now all of these people will have to contact me personally and you can contact me my email is just down below or you can dm me on instagram um because i can't i can't trace you on youtube so you have to be watching this video <laughs> now i know that the video was done about six weeks ago and i promised i would do a video the next week but i actually had a really tough couple of weeks um months and i just this is the, literally the first day i've had off to go and do it so that was a bit of a challenge. So there you go. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for that lovely comment. Now, the next winner is for um, my merino sock in the fawn colorway, which is these like purple and burgundy and some sky blue teals there. And then you've got some kind of deep burgundy going down to browns. And um, so it's on a, a cream base with some rusty shots through as well. So this is called Fawn and it's on my uh, merino sock base, which is 75-25 merino nylon. Kitten. She decided to attack, to attack it. There will be quite a lot of kitten interruptions. I think you like it, so I'm not going to say sorry. So that is um, my own hand dyed yarn, which um, I haven't dyed in a long time. So that's quite special. So this is going to Tanya CS. Um, so Tanya said, congratulations on 100 and even more so thank you for 100. I have been loving all the bits of Little Toast recently. Well, I've got a bit more for you. I lost my little nugget the past year. So watching Little Toast has brought quite a bit of joy. Oh, I'm sorry, Tanya, that you lost your little. I, I had a little bit of a scare there yesterday with my uh, my bigger nugget beans. And um, I don't wish it on anybody. I'm so sorry if you if you have. Um, for your little nugget and I'm glad that toast has brought you some joy because that must be really hard and here's another little present for you because you deserve it it's horrible going through that um so the next prize is this open sky yarns this is open sky yarns warm breeze um it's cirrus smooth sock at uh, 75 
wool 25% nylon. This feels like really soft, super soft. Um, hand dyed with love in South Africa. Make things, give things, share things, which is lovely. And this really nice high twist actually on it. So that's really lovely. And this is the colorway After the Rain. After the Rain by Open Sky Yarns dyed in South Africa. So that is um, absolutely stunning. This is fingering weight fingering weight yarns. So that goes to Annalisa. Annalisa says congratulations. Um, little emojis of cornucopias exploding. Uh, the podcast I liked most was when you and James were in London and visited somewhere. Uh oh, it cut off. So anyway, that's where that's the way it started. But I do love those vlogs. I do love those kind of um, kind of spur of the moment vlogs. And I think we were in Dublin and visited vi vi in London and visited a couple of yarn shops and a couple of different places. So that was really nice. Um, Annalisa, contact me either on my email, which is um, grace at babblestravelingyarns dot com, or you can DM me on Instagram. Yeah, they're the best ways to contact me. To be honest. Email is probably better than the other. So this last skein of yarn then is Hooking Marvelous Yarns. Hooking Marvelous Yarns. And it is a beautiful blue, pink, purple dip dyed. So that is so pretty. This would make a gorgeous pair of socks. This is a, um, it's hand dyed yarn, Hooking Marvelous Yarns. Cool. Uh, merino nylon, merino nylon. Oh no, 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 you little chunk. Sorry, she's obsessed with my yarn, and she literally, the um, I, the project I have at the moment has a lot of ends because this little lady keeps chewing them. Watching her, I have to watch her the whole time. Vicious. So anyway, this is Mermaid Dreams in Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Yarn, 100 grams, 425 meters. And it's from Hooking Marvelous Yarns. Beautiful. So this is going to go to um, Michelle Boone. Michelle Boone said, um, congratulations on your 100th episode. Love listening to all the in in extra interesting facts you give about yarn. I learn a lot. That's great because I find that really fascinating, to be honest. And when I find a little nugget of information, I love to share it because it's really interesting. And to be honest, no one else in my life cares. So I tell you guys, then you guys seem to care. So that's nice. I've found you. Thank you very much for listening to me. Babylon forever and ever and ever. Um, so I've also got this beautiful, um, this is wool wash soap, which is Olin from Olin, Olin.ie, an Irish company, an Irish yarn dyeing company, and she also sells this soap. I bought this last year at Barcelona Knits, and I'm heading back there this year, in a couple of weeks actually, so that's really excited. So um, Olin sells these wool bars. I haven't opened it at all because I don't want the nice smell to get out. Um, to use, we suggest using a basin, basin or a sink filled with lukewarm water to create gentle suds. Lather in your hand and then place the garment into the water, ensuring thoroughly soaked. Squeeze the suds throughout the garment and leave, the, leave to soak for 15 minutes. Alternatively, run the bar across the soaked garment and allow, this, allow to soak for 15 minutes. So... Um, yeah, so this little piece of beautiful soup goes to Urban Style Jantine and she says, I need to go back and watch your earlier travel vlogs. And I'm like, yes, do that because I love going back to watch them because it's fascinating to see who I was back then and see where I was back then. Sometimes when you're, when you've been back from traveling or if you've never gone traveling, it's interesting to see where you were. It's, it's those vlogs actually are a very important part of my own documentation of my um my life really and it's really nice it's like a personal vlog really and then i've got two more prizes i've got two beautiful gifts from Mars from Hey Brownberry, the Hey Brownberry podcast two of her special limited edition pins they aren't being made anymore there are not very many out there in the world anymore. So, so the first person who um, wins, so this one is the sweater on board. 
pin sweater on board. So it's done like one of those roadwork signs, which I absolutely love because it's proper construction that's going on. And it's, it's heavy duty, which means it needs two pins, structurally safe. And uh, this one goes to D Sebastian and she says, congratulations to you on your 100th episode. So there you go, that's for you D Sebastian. So get in contact with me and I will message you. Oh my gosh, this cat is ridiculous. Um, and then I've got, she's got another one called Socks on Board. I think she has another one called Yarn on Board. Uh, so Socks on Board. And that one is going to Jocelyn Viernes. So, um... <laughs> uh, Jocelyn says I'm not a regular podcast viewer but I recognize your name so I think you I think you've been around for a while um, I'm not a regular podcast viewer Amina would confirm this but I'm loving the background of hand knits and stash I'm getting distracted but but your but your beautiful accent pulls me right back through oh you cheeky uh, congratulations on this amazing milestone here's to another hundred so there you go Jocelyn just one for you socks on board contact me message me on Instagram or email me grace at babblestravelingyards.com Where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I think you should go outside. I think that's a good idea. I think you should go on your adventures in the world without being in this room and then you will leave me in peace so I can concentrate because there's nothing more annoying in the world. Now, although she's so cute. So those are the um, prizes from the uh, 100th episode giveaway. I've got a few pattern prizes to give out at the uh, during the knitting section of this podcast so stay tuned for more. Um, so say you're new and you don't really know what's going on and um, yeah hi my name is Grace. I live in Limerick in Ireland in the Republic of Ireland which is not the bit that's part of the UK, it's we have Euro and we are currently under the threat of Brexit. We don't know what's going to happen and we've no say in it. Great, lovely, happy days. So nice. <laughs> um, but you can follow me on Instagram as Vanna Willemiel and that's how you pronounce it. Vanna Willemiel. That's how I pronounce it. I made it up so I have no idea. I'm like, I suppose I'm the boss. <laughs> I'm the boss of this pronunciation. Um, it's, uh, yeah. So uh, the name comes from um, an old boyfriend of mine who is really into elves. And it's kind of a my version of, sp I spelt the elvish wrong. So it means beautiful daughter of William in elvish, except I spent, spelt my dad's name wrong because it's fine uh but you know it's all it was always free on the internet as a as a as a name so i kept it and it's stuck so it's gonna stay around forever some people call me vanna because they think that's my first name totally fine with that it means beautiful call me that all you like i'm delighted with that but my name is grace which is also a really nice name so whatever you want to call me is grand. Um, I have a, we have a Ravelry group called Babbles Travelling Yarns, a group, a podcast group, and it's on Ravelry and there's links all down below to all of these if you want to join in and introduce yourself, tell me where you're from. Um, I've got a lot to talk about, so I hope you're settled in. Now that we've got the prizes out of the way, I hope you've settled in. I've just got water today and I don't have my lipstick on and I keep looking at myself going, I think I need the lipstick, but I don't know where it is. I think it's in my retreat bag, but, oh, I've got some. So this might do you. This is um, Clarins, no, sorry, Clinique number two, Bear Pop. My mum gives me lipstick for Christmas. She's the only one who gives me any sort of a... Uh... Actually, that's she's where all of my makeup comes from because I don't wear makeup, so I don't really know what I'm doing. But I always find lipstick makes you look done up, so... See? Done! I'm done! And up! So there! <laughs> so, right, okay. Where shall we... What shall we... How should we start? So let me just talk a little bit about two events that I hosted over the last week, uh, the last two weekends. I hosted um, Babbles Retreats. Now Babbles Retreats were 
is a very, very special event. It is a very small country house in Tipperary, in the centre of Ireland, kind of the south south centre of Ireland. And um, it is based, it's um, it's an old country country house at about, two, I think it's 260 years old. And it's like in the forest. And it's owned by this wonderful family, the O'Connors. And we basically arrive on Friday and it feels like coming home. And uh, we all settle in, we dump our stuff, we sit down, we have a cup of tea, and then we we knit. We knit or we spin or we bring whatever fibre crafts you want. Um, I bring down all of my spinning equipment, all of my weaving equipment, um, just in case people want to learn, but people want to give it a go. This time I brought down my blending board, which was really good fun. We had a lot of people interested in learning how to do that. Um, and yeah, so this time I hosted two, one weekend after another, I think. That was a little bit unsustainable because I also had to work in between. So I was I was on the retreat from Friday to Friday to Monday, and then I would work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I was back back on retreat on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday again. Now for that I had to take three days off my job for annual leave, and and that was it's just a little bit unsustainable. Um, I think. Normally I have it over the October bank holiday weekend so we have the Monday off anyway so that's kind of all I have to take is the Friday which is nice but um, yeah so we might be splitting it up a little bit next year. Um, next year I'm also getting married so I don't think there will be an October like I don't think there will be an autumn one because I'm getting married in like next autumn so it'll probably just be in the spring maybe one in the summer we'll see we'll see. Um, if you are interested in coming to one of the retreats, um, there's a link down below on the video of what it was like. So on the sat on the Friday we all arrive in, we just chill out, we start, basically we start being fed from about six o'clock on Friday night and it doesn't stop in two hourly bursts until fr until Monday morning. It's pretty much bliss, very important that you wear your stretchy pants or a skirt. It's very important because you're sitting and knitting and eating and drinking. Uh, there's a pub just on, uh, just attached to the bar, uh, to the to the to the house, country house. So it's like a really nice kind of place to hang out. And there's never drink far away, but you don't have to drink if you don't want to. It's not a big boozy weekend. It's a very relaxy weekend. So that's really nice. <laughs> but it's nice to have the option. It's nice to get a little, have a little drink. You're not driving anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So it is lovely. It is a lovely place to 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 spend your time. Um, on the Saturday, I host a maker's market. This time we tried it in two different places. Normally we have it in the coach house, which is just behind, it's off to the side and, and behind the building, but it's a bit separate and it's a bit cold. So the next weekend, um, the owner had a really, really, really smart idea to put it into the forge bar itself so that people could have lunch there and they could also have the market there because it's on two levels. Now it's not great for accessibility, that's the only thing. It wouldn't be great for wheelchairs because it is a very old building and they don't have accessibility ramps or anything, it's listed. So they'd have to do um, a lot of that work. Um, so unfortunately, just to let you know that it is not accessible for wheelchairs. You could you can get wheel you can get a wheelchair into the top level, but you can't get it down to the bottom where the bar is. Um, but we could accommodate, like we can move some stuff around if we need to. But anyway, that's probably what we're going to be doing um, from, from now on, because it worked really, really well. Uh, it looked beautiful. It really did. So, yeah, so many thoughts and feelings about it. I just, it's just beautiful. We had two really interesting, like lovely bunches of people that came on both weekends. A lot of them have, have been returned, uh, like have come back several times. Like, Laura from the Willy Wolverine podcast has been to like all four. <laughs> She's like constant. She's just constantly there. I love her so much. <laughs> but yeah, so I think we have at least, you know, I think 90% of people have come back from previous times. So that means that it must be good, right? <laughs> it's just lovely to spend some time 
just with your friends and people who are interested in knitting and people who are interested in crafting and who don't really want to do anything else. There's no pressure to do anything else. On Sunday there, well, there was a walk um, up to the mountains just overlooking Ballyglass and then you could go around the other side. Lovely walk, loads of different kind of select, not, not very, not very tricky, not very hard. Um, it wasn't like a mountain climb, it's more of a walk in the forest. Um, so if you are able to walk, if you are interested in walking, it's really nice. Um, Again, you can actually drive up if you have accessibility problems. You can actually drive up and it, there's a beautiful kind of space um, to to park and overlook the, the valley as well, the Glen of Aherlow Valley. And they've got lovely seats. And um, yeah, so that's really nice to spend some time up there as well. And it, it's just really nice to showcase that part of the world. It is such a, it is somewhere a lot of people, most people actually, would never have gone to ever like they never even knew it existed before they came to the retreat so that's really really special so next time next the next one is going to be booked around is going to be around easter so um i'm going to get myself together we're hopefully going to start offering some classes on the saturday and maybe the friday as well for people who can't get tickets to the actual event because there are only like 10 tickets and three of those tickets are sharing a room do you know so if you can get three people to share a room together um then you know that's a really nice way to to get all of you in um but the best way to find out about tickets is by signing up to my newsletter on my website which is www.babblestravelinghours.com <laughs> bab i'll put it up here www sorry this way www.babblestravelingyarns.com Cool. I think that's probably all the way. Uh, it's probably backwards. I don't care. So yeah, I'm hoping to have one at Easter next year, and I'm hoping to also maybe have one in June, maybe before Woolen. So if people are traveling in from abroad um, to Woolen, it might be something that you'd want to come in an hour, uh, like a week early, spend time at the Babbles Retreat and then spend a little time traveling around Ireland and then go to Willen at the end and then you can fly out from there. So that's probably what I'm aiming for. I have an idea in my head and I've said it now on the podcast, so it must be real. <laughs> but um, un not unfortunately, but it is something that I have to look at very carefully. I've done five now, technically. Um, and it is a case where I am going to have to raise my prices a little bit in line with what other retreats are offering. Um, I've, I have found that um, by doing a little bit of market research that I am losing a significant amount of money <laughs> at the current prices that I charge. Um, I have to take time off work. If I was to just to do the work shift, if I was to work a weekend shift, I would earn probably three, four times the amount of money that I actually get from the weekend. So um, it is something that I have to think about to make it sustainable, to make sure that it is something that I can carry on doing. If it isn't, like I absolutely love the weekends. That's why I've done five at a loss. <laughs> it's something that I uh, I love doing. I love going to. It's, it's, um, it's something I, I'm really proud of. I'm really happy that people want to come back again and again and again. But it is something that I want to make sure I can continue doing. Um, so that um, I'm going to be sending around a um, a survey to all the existing um, pay to the existing retreaters who've come before, and another survey to people who haven't been on my mailing list just to get an idea of what sort of things you would like to have at it. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that it's perfect the way it is, don't change anything. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, but I have so many ideas. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's something that I would like to develop more and it's something I would like to be sustainable for myself and for 
the country house itself as well because they put a lot of work into it. Can I just say, for anyone who's been, Ruth has started knitting a cowl. She who says she's not a knitter but sits down and chats with us the whole time. <laughs> And last retreat I taught her kids how to spin and then the next uh, the first retreat I taught their kids how to spin and blend the board and blend and then the next day I taught them how to, we taught them how to knit. Now I have to say that Jo was fantastic at she has a lot more patience than I do with little children and they're absolutely gorgeous little children but she has a very fantastic amount of patience when it comes to working with children. Thank you so much Jo. You are the kindest person I know. You are that's just fact so um yeah it was just it was a wonderful time it was wonderful i put up only one video of uh one vlog of the one event of the first event because the second one was just a repeat so there was you know it, it wasn't just a repeat every every retreat is a bit different but i i put a lot more work into the instagramming of the second one because it's i find that i either have to video it or i have to film it or i have to instagram it it's like one or the other they're two different formats one is horizontal one is portrait and the moments are missed you know once you've taken them so also i don't want to be spending the whole time just with a camera in your face as well like i don't want that I have a little, there's a little bit of that, <laughs> so do expect a little bit of that, but I will always ask you if it's okay. Apart from that time I put Ruth up because she was knitting, because she always promised that she never would, and I was like, oh my god, it's happening. <laughs> Poor old Ruth. <laughs> she gets an awful bash. <laughs> but we love her endlessly. She, that, oh, Ruth is the owner, and she is the front of house, and she is most fabulous person yeah very good very good very good so oh my gosh 30 minutes and I haven't talked about what I'm making this is what happens when I don't talk when I don't do it for so long <laughs> right what I am making so I am knitting some things I finished a pair of socks this pair of socks that have been on the <laughs> on my needles four months so this is a pair of socks they're only tiny they're like 30 they're like 60 stitches um because they're for a person who has a smaller feet than me i did a um i did a two by two rib i'll just put them down because i did them two at a time according to mina's two at a time um pattern um i did a two at a time on one on one long needle magic loop and two point 2.5 millimeter millimeter needles and um, two by two rib then a leg as long as I thought didn't count and then I did a um this is a mini heel flap and gusset by Mina with a fish lips kiss heel adjustment <laughs> So this is a bit of a bastardization really of a couple of patterns. So you can see the mini heel flap and it's a garter stitch heel which gives it extra cushiness. So I did a mini heel flap there only like oh, like eight rows and then I did a heel flap and or did um so it's supposed it's kind of a heel flap. So I did a small heel flap and then I did a fish lips kiss heel and then I picked up the stitches along the side there and I just decreased them very quickly over like eight rows. So um, yeah, really, really easy, really nice and handy. And sometimes when I'm not thinking, I come to it and I'm like, oh, I'll just throw this in. Really, really easy. I then I just did a um, a rounded toe. I think it is. I decreased every second stitch for eight rows. No, for ten rows, and then for the last ten rows, I decreased every round. So you kind of go slowly, and then it starts going in, and then I kitchenered the toe just there nice and neat i've got a little ear on it but sure listen once they're worn they'll be fine i haven't woven in the end i've just discovered so that's my kitchener kitchener toe there there's that so i'm sorry now i've got this weird box why is that there go away Oh dear, I'm adjusting. Oh, as I go. So this is Regia Summer Night or Fall Night. 
colorway I can't remember and I don't know where I bought it I don't know where I got it it's in my stash for a while look at that little heel look at it so chunky and so cute it's like ears it's like little ears oh look it's so cute oh it's like a unicorn hmm I like it if I did it like that oh so cute so these are for a Christmas present this I was hoping to make three pairs of socks for Christmas I started these in May it's now November the third <sighs> I'm very slow knitter I've got other stuff to do this is what happens when you gather all these extra crafts so um then the next thing that I am making is my well the oldest we'll go with the oldest one so we're doing this myself and Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast are doing a spin and make along so it is a um intentional spinning kind of project and there it is ending on the 30th of November so in order to enter you can have a spinning fo and a um, a hand spun m made project so it can be knitted crocheted woven whatever very open but it has to be made out of hand spun so you have your spinning fo's and we're going to be pulling threads from that and then you have your fo's your your finished made objects on the um that that sec that separate thread so um it so we were going to have it split up into segments so the spinning segment was 6th of may to the 31st of july to end to include uh, tour de fleece but you know people were spinning and knitting so fast so we just opened it up so it doesn't really matter so you have your spinning fo section and then your made object but the we were trying just to make people think about what they were spinning and to use their stash now um so the rules are i have the rules over here and the rules are downstairs downstairs as well in the little box um you must be a member of both the knitting expat podcast and the babbles yarns podcast groups on Ravelry. Uh, the idea is you spin yarn for a project you want to make so try spinning intentionally. Um, this can be a project for any type of project so you know anything you want. Um, you can use a wheel or a spindle or any other method you wish to yarn to, you wish to spin yarn. There's no minimum amount you need to spin as it's meant to be whatever constitutes a challenge for you. You can sign spin for any project at all um works in progress are allowed and the smell is meant for the smal or spin make along is meant to be a supportive place where we can help encourage each other along the way and there'll also be some prizes offered at the end of the spinning segment and the making thread tre segment i haven't spun i haven't pulled any any winners from um the spinning segment yet but there are quite a lot on there and i'm quite so I've got some the smell, some of the smile prizes that we have at the moment. Uh, 500 grams of your choice of fiber from johnarbin.com. Very generous, John Arbin. Thank you very much. Um, two bags from my cottage number nine. I have one here, which is a beautiful bag from my cottage number nine. And I'm going to be getting a a second one from her for a giveaway as well um then i've got a pattern for the country garden socks by ellie jones beautiful pattern ellie jones is the host of the craft house magic podcast and i love her two tiny little bits um and then i've got some pins some more pins of the of hey brownberries pins i'm i'm starting to run out of those and then there'll be no more so the same type, the sock, socks on board and sweater on board. And I've also got a spinning, a spinning braid from Bookworm Crafts. I have a couple of other braids, which I might throw into the prize pack. Um, so this is a beautiful braid called Poison Apple and um, by by Bookworm Crafts and it's on Rambouillet which is like the bounciest softest yarn or fibre it's beautiful so that is um, another part of the prize so some only some of the prizes I've got some hand spun here which I'm also going to donate um, this is some stunning oh god it's gorgeous 
Maybe I won't be able to give that away. Oh, I don't know what to do with that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. Oh, oh dear. Oh gosh, it's all gone wrong. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. So I've got some absolutely beautiful meet the wool, hand spun, hand dyed, naturally dyed wool. Uh, Romney, I believe. Um, from uh, Meet the Wool, Sandra from the Irish Fibre Crafters. So this one is naturally dyed with sandalwood and then this one is naturally dyed with madder root. Beautiful. So yeah, so the only thing is you spin, spin whatever yarn you want, put it in the FO thread, spin or um, knit, spin or sorry, knit, crochet, weave, macrame, felt whatever whatever you want with the with hand spun it has to be hand spun you don't have to have hand spun it you can buy it from people who um do hand spin um but uh, yeah it just has to be hand spun so what am i making so i hand spun a couple of braids from irish fa irish fairy tale yarns and i am making the um the so faded sweater from the gradient sets and I'm currently using my helical technique with it. So this is what it looks like at the moment. This is a bit of a mess. I have joined it in the front in a little V. There's my little V. It looks like this. Eee. And we're onto the brown section. So all the blues ran out at the start. I was like, oh. I thought I had more blues in that. So this is all the hand spun and this I'm not, I'm not doing the garter stitch section. Um, so I'm just doing uh, the plain section. So I'm down to the stage where I'm just at the, I'm literally just at the point where I need to split for the sleeves and that's why I've stopped. I just need to split for the sleeves. So yeah, so I have this. And what I'm going to do with this afterwards is once I have knit it, I'm going to stick it. Don't freak out. Don't cry. You'll be fine. It's going to be fine. Trust me. Um, yeah, so I'm coming down onto the browns now. And so these are the two gradients that I'm spinning. So it's going to go right down to this dark brown. And then what I'm going to do is add in this one. And it's got brown in the center. So I'm going to start, I'm going to add that in once we both get to the dark brown. And then it's going to fade up to the purple or fade down again to the purple to the blue. So it's going to go brown, 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 purple, brown. And then it's going to go, uh, it's going to go brown, blue, and then deep blue. And I'd love to get it long. If it doesn't go long, I've got this, which I'm going to add to the bottom. Or do you know what? Maybe I'll just mix it in here. Maybe I'll just add it in there and leave the blue to the edges and the end and the ends of the sleeves. I might do that. I can break the yarn whenever I want. So that's my spinning project, my spin and make along. And I have these in my cottage number nine bags. This one is very old. It's my favorite. I love it so much. This is one of her wraparound bags and it's really really beautiful so it's got a drawstring drawstring and then these two handles which are attached which you can then use just to be like hey what you doing and all your yarn is secure but it's all coming out the top and it's all great and wonderful and fabulous so yep yeah. you've got two pockets inside as well there's nothing in them at the moment just my my sad little I I need to get more I need to get more um notions um bags and and like separate them out so I have them in each bag you know so I have the right amount of notions in each bag but what I was happening was I was getting favorite notions and then I was getting um I had favorite notions that I wanted to use all the time so I was constantly swapping them from bag to bag but I should just get the same notions and get them all the same and that's what I should do but I haven't. So that is the um, spin and make along so that is my part of my uh, spin and make along project. I don't know if I'm going to get it finished for November it doesn't matter I can't win anyway. <laughs> so whatever I don't care. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe me and Mina will send each other little congratulations presents because Mina has finished a billion things. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, she made the cutest little dress for um, Layla, which Layla's not stopped wearing. It's gorgeous. I sent her over some of my Poison Apple um, colorway out. It's actually, it's not really, well, maybe it is similar to the Bookworm Crafts. I'm so sorry if I've copied that. I don't think I have, but you know, sometimes I'm sorry. I do apologize. Hers is way better than mine. Trust me. <laughs> Get hers, not mine. <laughs> um, but she spun it so that, so there was like a hundred grams of that. So she had it as the yoke and then the rest of it was Witchcrafty Lady, who was another fiber dyer and hand spinner. But um, uh, Mina got red from her and she was making a whole, the, the rest of the body in the red and it's gorgeous, so cute. And red is like Layla's favorite color. So cute, cute out, cute out. So, and then we've got the big boy, the bad boy of knitting. This is my star flake. And I'm currently this much to go on this row. And I've got a story to tell you. I've got a little story to tell you about this baby. So, first of October, I was sitting, it was dark, it was cozy, and I had just found out that my friend Akira from the Knitting Annihilator podcast had had a tiny little baby. So cute, little baby boy. Congratulations, Akira. I'm so happy for you. And I'm happy that you and he are healthy and everything's wonderful. So anyway, we were chatting and how everything was going. And then she was like, have you seen the new Starflake? And I'm like, haven't you got a baby? What are you doing? And she was like, no, no, you need to see. You need to see what's happening. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. And then I saw the first clue and I was like, and then of course we were just chatting about like how fast some of these people were knitting, like the fastest, so fast. Oh, um, if there, I'm gonna try and put a timestamp on here. If you don't wanna, if, um, if you're not finished yet or if you're trying to keep it secret, if you're trying to watch it and not wanna see it or spoil it, there's, spoil, there's spoilers everywhere on the inter internet about it. Everything has been up. Um, he's, he's, he said he was fine with all the spoiler images. Like there's no stopping it, so there's no point. Um, but if you do not want to be spoiled, I'll try and put a timestamp somewhere. So, I mean, I've seen, you may have seen a flash already, but maybe I'll put it up later at some point. Um, yeah, I'm not finished it. And it's a big bundle of mess at the moment. So, and I'm adapting it a lot. You'll see why in a minute. Um, yeah, so anyway, we were chatting and then of course Grace goes and di dives into her yarn, her own yarn, never happens, and uh, comes up with a colour combo. The colour combo is, uh, so the, the pattern asks for two colours, but two balls of each. I picked these colours shocking i was torn between these two and then this one and a blue with a, with a, a like a white with the blue speckle i think that would have been nice too but i just went for it i was like no these are your colors just do it just get them just get, take the colors and just do it so yeah 200 400 grams in total 200 grams of each color so i and fingering weight so grace cast on immediately and she got the star finished in like 20 seconds. <laughs> it was so fast. Um, yeah, that first clue was really, really fast. And then, um, then the brioche. The brioche. Lord, you lord, you lord. So that slowed me down quite a bit because he wrote it in, in one pass brioche. And then I hate one pass brioche because it's, so slow like the slowest um i hate having to do the same thing twice that's why i do two at a time socks that's why i do two at a time sleeves it's the same concept having to knit the same row twice is exhausting in my brain so i had to i adapted it to 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 one pass brioche so um i've got a video as well which i might pop in here of how i do one pass brioche um i probably will put it up separately as well just because I put I put one up and people were like 
what is this magic? And I was like, oh, I don't have the brain space to explain it. And then I did film it, but I don't know if I ever put it up. So I'm going to put it in here now. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do one pass brioche. So brioche is basically um, knits and pearls. These are the pearl stitches in here. These are the knit stitches here. And this, these kind of strands in between the knits and pearls are all yarn overs. So if I turn it around the other way, you'll see that the strands on this side are all yarn overs, but the knits are green and the pearls are blue. And the yarn overs are blue here as well. So they're the visible sides. So it is a reversible rib fabric with yarn overs. That's essentially what, what brioche is. Um, as, that's as far as my understanding of it anyway. I'm sure other people have very specific answers about what it is and what it is not. Um, but for me, it is a rib, which is a knit pearl with yarn overs. So what I do is, um, now brioche is normally knit in one pass which means that you have one strand and you are knitting and slipping. So you are yarn over knitting and then slipping. Um, but what one pass brioche is, is you are having a yarn over for every single stitch you do, knit or purl all the way across. What that means is the yarn is always making yarn overs so the yarn is always at the front. The yarn is constantly at the front of the work. And if it's not at the front of the work, then you bring it to the front of the work. So I'll show you here how to um, how to do it. So you will have two strands. Now I knit my uh, color work with two hands, which makes this a little bit easier for me. So both of the yarns are to the front of the work, but the next stitch I'm going to knit is a knit stitch. So in order to make sure that the this one especially stays to the front of the work, the needle comes underneath this yarn and into this knit stitch. It's knitting both the yarn over or the, the stitch and its corresponding yarn over together, but it's working underneath this yarn over or this um, this uh, the yarn in the right hand which in this case, if you can see, I'm knitting with the blue and I'm purling with the green. So with the purling yarn, you need to go, when you're knitting, you need to bring that purling yarn in front and then knit through that stitch. Now, when I'm pulling that off, that purling yarn is lying over the knit stitch that has just been formed, forming its corresponding, forming this stitch again. So you're ending up all the time, all the way along with knits and yarn overs. Now to do the purl, the yarn is now from the knit stitch, it's at the back of the work and the yarn over has been formed, that's at the back of the work. So the yarn has to be brought forward again because the yarn is always brought to the front in one pass brioche. So this time the yarn is to the front, this yarn is to the front, but it's kind of out of the way. And you're going to be purling with this yarn. And this is quite simple. You just purl as normal. Okay. But now, oh, sorry. Make sure you purl those two stitches together. The, the green stitch and the corresponding blue yarn over. Now this time you're going to be knitting again. So, but the yarn is already at the front. Everything's at the front. You haven't changed anything. So the only time you're bringing the yarn forward is after a knit stitch. So I'll show you again, I'm knitting, making sure that that pearl yarn is to the front of the work, out of the way, bringing that off and bringing the yarn over to the back of the work, bringing both of those yarns forward through the needle tips and then purling into this pearl stitch with the pearl yarn. Bringing that off, both yarns are to the front, Fabulous. That's what we want to. That's what we want every time we're starting knit or purl. Yarn is always to the front, and you're knitting those two stitches to get those two together, the knit stitch and the yarn over together. 
There you go. And that is forming its yarn over. And then you bring those both to the front again. Purl your stitch. Yarn is to the front. Wonderful. Leave it there. Knit through that. You see, as I'm knitting, it's forming this blue stitch. This blue yarn over is forming a yarn over over the last purl stitch. Do you see that? And then bring it, bring that back and back to the front again. What was that? Does that make sense? Yarn is always to the front. Do you like my timestamp? Okay. So yeah, so I was brioching, brioching, brioching. I was brioching through the whole first retreat. I was like, oh my God, this friggin' brioche needs to end. Um, I made approximately one billion mistakes and uh, then it was done and I was not going back. So there it was done. There it was done. Then it moves on to this super fun bit, which is the best bit. Do you want to see it? Okay, you've had enough warning. If you're here now, you're here. Oh no, wait, I do have to finish this off. Maybe I'll just stop talking and I'll come back once I filmed it. Yeah. Okay, so I finished that. Um, I finished it, right, are you right? No, I didn't finish it. I finished the row. The rows are like 500 stitches long. Okay, so here we are. We are on the final section. We have reached the final section. However, okay, let me just talk about, okay, okay. Let me just, you ready? You ready to see it? Look away if you're not ready, go, okay. This is my Starflake shawl. So it has a, this is the first section just here. You've got all these one, like these little star shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these little points. Then the second section, actually no, the first section is this section and the, these. These are so satisfying. I love them so much. I want to make a shawl entirely of them. I think there's a shawl called the um, Victoire Weasley, maybe. I think there's like a whole, and it's just like, oh, it's so nice. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and then there, here's the brioche. And I think I made a mistake by doing the brioche in the blue. I should have done it in this, in that side, but nah, that's okay. I kind of wanted it, I, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think it's just fine. I think it's just fine, okay? It's just fine. <laughs> so, and then, so that's the brioche and I did everything in one pass brioche. Brioche, 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 if you're fancy, brioche, if you're a yoki. So that's the third, er, second section and that went on for actual ever. Hey, uh, toast, you need to not do that. Thanks very much. So that went on forever and ever and ever, amen. And then the third section were these um, really, again, absolutely gorgeous kind of textured uh, garter stripes really nice really really nice and then there were these little i'll turn it around now so the other way so you can see so there were these little uh wedges just here oh my god you're so annoying Bloody. james let in the two cats while i was knitting get out toast go on get out toast out toast out out just looking she's gonna make more noise in a second so yeah so this is these are the little wedges just up here across the um the arches of the brioche there we go good woman that was a big jump what a big jump um and then here's where i made mistakes just one a very consistent mistake though i just got into the i just got into the flow so you see these little eyelets coming down they're really nice but see this bit here where there's no eyelets down here and there's eyelets up here? There should be no eyelets there. There should be just knitting there. Oops, I just eyeletted the whole thing. There, there should be no, no eyelets here. There should be no eyelets just here. 
you get you get the idea, right? There should be no eyelets where there is knitting down here. There should be eyelets only on these kind of sections. So I was like, Argh. so I put it in the naughty bag for like a few days to be like, oh, I can't face it. And I'm thinking that it's going to affect the shawl in the way that it kind of waggles. So what I did was I added another little wedge up there. I'm just going to have a little wedge up there on top of all the little ones. And I think that's going to be fine. It's just going to add, just going to add a little bit more because I feel like it's going to, I feel like without that, it would just kind of be a bit flat and it might bag. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out if it will or not. So um, anyway, if I block it out, it'll be fine. So that's my little mistake and that's my little fix. I just added another one in the opposite colour just up there. So now the final the final part of this shawl is just garter stitch which is so great. I'm really happy with that because I just want something I can just garter just knit 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 knit. So it's gonna be a, a garter border then of however long I want. Can I talk to you about the yarn requirements for this just a bit? Just this is uh, the back. That's the back of the shawl. This is the front of the shawl. <sighs> I ran out of green yarn. Um, just, just here. Literally just there. I had to break into the second ball of green yarn for approximately 10 grams. 10 grams. I'm done now with that green yarn apparently, apart from the bind off. Do you want to see how much is left? Do you want to see? Do you want to see? This much. The whole ball, pretty much. Now, I, okay, I am knitting on 3.75 millimeter needle, which is what the pattern recommends, but I think my gauge is smaller. So if you, if I was to knit this again and, and, in, and intentionally use the same that, you know, not want to waste all this yarn, uh, I would knit it on like a five or six millimeter needle to make it huge, like a huge blanket, right? So do you want to see how much I have left of the blue? This is the first ball. I have a whole other ball I haven't touched yet and I'm on the last bit. Now the last bit is all blue but literally this garter section is going to be gigantic if it's going to take the whole 100 gram ball of yarn for the final bit. And I think most people just got sick of knitting the final bit. I don't know. Am I the only... I haven't really been listening to people when they're finishing it off so I don't know if they... I haven't heard any... I don't know. It could definitely be done with just two skeins. Just two skeins. Maybe cut the brioche section down by like an inch and you definitely get it. Well, I'm saying definitely, but you you would definitely get it down by a lot. Do you know, like, I just feel like it's, I'm just sort of a little bit cross that everyone went out and bought two, like 400 grams, like two extra skeins, which really I don't think they needed. Like, if you threw in a couple of um, extra minis in there and used up a few minis up for, of, of these little sections, you could definitely do it in two, two skeins and one pop of a mini. That's all you need, I think, personally. If you knit it on, if you get like a slightly smaller gauge, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm just in a mood. <laughs> but I'm just like... Maybe it's all just to sell yarn. I don't know, but ha! I just don't know. It's and this is my yarn. Okay, so my yarn is a hundred grams, uh, four hundred meters, um, fingering weight, bog standard, merino nylon. You know, I would definitely be advising you to. I don't know. I mean, I suppose it's better to get extra to be safe, but that's forty euros extra that you're spending. So instead of an instead of a 40 euro shawl, it's an 80 euro shawl, you know, 80 euros and maybe five euros for a mini or it's 40 euros, like 45 euros. Does that make 
make sense? I don't know. I don't know, man. Makes me feel a little bit done over a little bit, you know? Now, the pattern is gorgeous. It's so fun to make. Really, really fun to make. But, like, I just... I don't know if it's necessary for it to be, honest to God, four skeins of fingering weight hand-dyed yarn. I don't think it needs to be. It is super fun to knit. Um, I think I'm just going to keep knitting because I've I've got the yarn now. I've used it. You know, I've, I've taken it out of it. But I can't reskein it. I can't resell it. I'm going to use it. So, uh, yeah. I just, yeah. Does anyone else agree with me? What do you think? What do you think? Am I being too persnickety? I mean, it's all about gauge. So if your gauge is a bit fine, it's a bit tighter than the pattern says. Um, I just literally got the needles and I, I'm i knitting these on Chowgu uh, 3.75 needles. And that's recommended in the pattern. But he's a very loose knitter by the, by the look of his videos. So maybe you do need it. But I say you wouldn't be using, you wouldn't be using over half. You know, I can't see how you would be using four full skeins. <sighs> yeah, anyway. So that's, I suppose he's given you enough, you know, to make sure that you have enough. He doesn't, you know, running out is the worst thing. So you don't want to be doing that. But at the same time, you don't want to be wasting money either. You know, if you don't have the money, like, yarn's expensive. That's my little two cents anyway. The pattern is wonderful. Very wordy. I, I'm i very, um, I'm very, what's the word? Um, short attention span. I need things to be repetitive and then to be done. Uh, oh. Yeah, so the, the brioche, I was kind of winging it. And then hence there was a few mistakes, but I'm not going to show you. You don't need to see it. You can see it close up if you're coming to Barcelona. But if you're looking for my mistakes, <laughs> I'm going to be pushing you away. <laughs> I think. Now, I do think this is going to be absolutely gorgeous, but I'm going to be making it very big and I'm going to just keep knitting it until Barcelona, I think. Barcelona is in about three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. So I'm just going to keep knitting. I'm just on the, uh, but I'm on the garters section now, so that's really fun. So I'm just gonna knit, 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 knit forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So yeah, that's what I am currently knitting on. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I have my other project, which is my design, but I've ripped out all the progress I made because I need to adjust the sleeves. I think the sleeves, when I split for the sleeves, I didn't split for them. Um. I don't know, I think I needed a little bit less on the sleeves and more on the body, uh, just for the shape that I want. Um, yeah. So there's no point showing you that because I have gone backwards, not forwards, backwards. <laughs> uh, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my dream knitting. So this kind of comes into spinning a little bit as well. But I have got, uh, before we do that, actually, I just want to talk about three patterns which I want to give away. Two patterns have been gifted to me to give away and then one I absolutely love and I'd love to just give it to someone. So I've set up the, I actually have done this. I'm very smart. So um, I have set up the giveaways, giveaway thread in uh, Ravelry. And if you want to go over and have a look at all three, sh all three patterns that I've put up there, I've put the same prompt for everything just to make it easy. I want you to tell me what um, some wonderful things that have happened to you uh, this past week. So the first one I want to talk about is the one that I am um, actually they are they're all absolutely beautiful but the first one is called Grisham by Brandy Sharping and it's this beautiful on the bias really easy to knit shawl and um let me just um tell you what she says about it because that's what it's all about um so the pattern uh, Grisham comes from my love of reading novels specifically John Grisham novels this is an easy to memorize knit love that so much um design so you can pick up read or listen along with your favorite novel as you enjoy some relaxing garter and stripes i'm obsessed with that grisham is knit from tip to edge increasing every right side row to create an asymmetrical triangle shape that will keep you warming keep you warm without much bulk it's a really nice shawl for like really good for like retreats <laughs> for knit nights things that you just don't need to think about you know when your mind is kind of going a bit wild 
and you just need something really simple to knit on. This seems like it's going to be really good. She's put in some really lovely colour pop colour pops. Um, so this design encourages you to play with those minis that you love so much or to dig into that scrap basket for some colourful stripes. You can follow the colour change guidelines provided or play around with some striping that suits you. It's really lovely. I'll put up a picture just here so you can see. It's so so pretty really nice so um well done brandy it's absolutely gorgeous real pretty real pretty thank you so much for the uh, for the chance to give that shawl away so um you can find out the link to enter in to get that pattern for free or you can just um get it from the pattern description below as well um that one's a really nice one as well just for like maybe if you're learning to knit shawls if you're trying to get into shawls just to try and just go into it without any like it seems really really nice and easy so um oh excuse me sorry someone's just sent me a message there about work tonight and I'm like maybe but after the podcast <laughs> um yes so the next one oh my gosh this one's beautiful this one came out actually over the retreats and I was able to give away a couple of these patterns at the retreats and I'm delighted. This is a DK weight shawl by Barbara Novelko. Nope, Nale, Nale, hang on, Nal Nalevko, Nalevko? Barbara, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> She's Barbara of the Knitting I Love podcast. She lives in Limerick as well with me. Um, she's a Polish girl who lives in Ireland and she's fabulous, prolific knitwear designer. And um, yeah, she's stunning. So she's she's made this really beautiful shawl. I'll pop it up on screen just here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so this is the Lights and Twigs shawl. It's a DK weight shawl um, and it requires 435 or 654 yards. So you can get a small and large. So I'd say that would be, what, two skeins? A two skein or three skein shawl, I think. Um, yarn... Yeah, she for the small size she used 200 grams and for the large size she used 292 grams. So I like that, you know, that she used all of the yarn that she's going to give. Anyway, it's absolutely beautiful, really. Um, so all, it's so it's all one color, uh, DK, and she's got these kind of bubbles and then these kind of uh, pearl ridges to form these twigs absolutely beautiful and the little tassel at the bottom it looks like a really large cozy gorgeous yarn um so she recommends scarn studio drops lima or plymouth yarn galway worsted or a diamond galway so any sort of dk weight i think um the gauge is 15 stitches um per inch and 15 stitches and 28 rows per per four inches sorry not per Jeez, that's a lot. Um, yeah, so absolutely gorgeous. That link is just down there to give away one of those on the podcast. And so if you're interested in one of those, a really cozy, warm winter shawl. Really lovely. It's really pretty. I bet that would knit up so fast as well. DK. Oh, so nice. After knitting all of this and fingering weight, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that looks really nice. And then the final one that I... Um, had a look at it just popped up on Instagram and I was just so drawn to it um it's by a, an Irish designer JST Designs so that's Jen Sheelan Tolland Jennifer sorry Jennifer Shields Tolland and they're the boardwalk stroll mitts and I'll just pop them up here so you can see them Aren't they just the most elegant things ever? I love that little lace detail around the cuff. And then I think it's twisted stitches and then just the lines that they form around your hands. They just look so elegant and beautiful. I really, really love it. Um, so it's a rib pattern, which means that the size is going to be really nice. So she's got size, small, medium and large. Um, and then the yarn weight is fingering weight yardage you only she only uses like half a ball 157 to 166 yards so like half a ball so you can get two of these out of one ball of uh, fingering weight yarn um so that's really i think it'd be lovely for christmas knits 
you know, really, really pretty. So I'm going to personally buy one of those for someone who is going to be in the, um, who's, and the thread to enter that competition is down below as well. So please do head over and tell me all the wonderful things that have happened to you. And uh, even if it's something small, even if it's something like I had time to have my breakfast before work today, like that's a big deal for me. Literally just getting up early is hard now. <laughs> hard forever. I'm not a morning person. I wish I was. <sighs> so I'd love to give away three of those patterns for you, my beautiful viewers, because you're all so beautiful. So they are some of my dream knitting that I really want to cast on, but I don't have the time to. So I want to share the love and, and, and share it with all of you. What I do want to find, and I want your advice on this one, okay? I want to find a pattern, a lace, lace pattern for a wedding shawl or a little wedding cardigan or a wedding bolero or something, something. What I want. And if anyone has an idea about this, I might just have to, I'm actually going to Barcelona Knits on the 5th. 16th 17th of November and one of the classes on the Sunday I'm going to is Andre Knits uh, and he is uh, he has his class designing your own lace shawl and I'm like yes Andre so that's what I want so what I want is I want kind of a, a v-neck or a sweetheart neckline um shawl Thing can, that can be maybe pinned to the dress or something um, and then little fluttery sleeves that can be maybe pinned underneath and I want a nice lace pattern maybe like a leafy lace pattern but like really delicate so let me show you it's actually part of my spinning I have been spinning this BFL and silk from uh, it's kind of a mess now because the cats have been at it. So this is the BFL and silk and it's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful to spin because it's got that silk in it. You can spin it super fine. So I have been spinning my finest spin ever, which is this. And I want to keep it, I might just... So this is the my finest ever spin. I want to keep it in... A single I think if I ply it I'm gonna lose a little bit I think the, I'm, it's gonna bulk up and I don't necessarily want a bulky thing I want a really light thing and I'd also like to bead it so if anyone has any pattern ideas please let me know because otherwise I'm gonna have to design the bloody thing and I'm like I'm so I know I'm not very good at it um, but you know, needs must, I might have to. So Andre, I'm gonna be on to you, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna come up, I'll be like early, I'll be like, Andre, could you just quickly whip up a little design for me there now, good man, so I can just follow it. <laughs> oh God. So yeah, that's even a stitch pattern or something. Like I've got a couple of stitch pattern books, um, which I don't know where they are now. I think they're in the back, they're behind all those other books. So that's what I what I want to do with that. Um, I think we've been dress shopping and <sighs> it's so emotionally hard. Like this dress has to be me in a dress. And I'm like, oh, the pressure, I don't know who I am. How am I supposed to know what dress is me? Ah. Anyway, whatever. So that's what I would love. I'd love to have something knitted, something just to, I'm thinking just maybe like a half circle or maybe a three quarter circle pie shawl that I could just pin down the front and then pin underneath and then have the fluttery sleeves, a little cape situation. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. Comment down below with your suggestions. Or if you have a stitch pattern, comment down below with the name of the stitch pattern or send it to me or something. Anything, please, please. Does, do people want to knit it for me? That'd be great. <laughs> so yeah. 
Oh, I'm, in, I'm drinking out of my Remembrances Pottery logo mug. Ah! So nice. So that, there's some of the knitting that I'm talking about. So I've spoken a little bit there about my spinning. I've got some other spinning, which I'm really excited about. Um, first off, I want to speak a little bit about the Felview fibres. This is my finished spinning object. I don't know if I showed this before, but I want to show it again because it's so pretty. So this is a singles, which I spoke about. I, I think I was spinning it at the time. But it's it was a set of Rolex, which I got from Felview Fibres. And I think there was like seven or eight Rolex in it. And I spun them just end to end. And I left it as a singles because I kind of want to see what that weaves up like. Kind of like dark to blue to light to dark to light to dark to light. And yeah, I'm thinking of doing something with that. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm really happy with that. And it's got this really subtle fire star sparkle in there. I'm going to turn it around again. The lens is so nice on the other side. <laughs> One of these days I'll get a new phone, but this phone is doing me fine for now. But I'd like to have a nice lens on the front of the phone so you can see that little sparkle there. A little bit of fire star. It's so subtle. It's so lovely. I love it so much. So it's a little bit energised, but I think it's beautiful Boop. so that's my yarns I love it love it love it then I've got my sweet Georgia skein so this is tea party um on Polworth and silk which is so so pretty it is really lovely I just I think I did a um a um, a fractal ply in which I got the yarn and I split it down the middle I spun one end to end and then I split the other side into lots of little strips and I spun those end to end and then I put them all together so you got a lot of barber polling but a lot of the yarn actually comes together to make the solid colours in certain points so you've got like a green there a pink there dark navy I've got like you've got a teal in places but then you've got the barber polling as well so you've got like the best of both worlds I think that's my favourite way to ply yarn to spin a braid a colorful braid is fractal spun because the colors match up in different sections quite a lot which is nice so you get like your barber polling and your mixing and your solid colors and it becomes there's less of a chance of it like muddying up um, but from a distance this looks a bit brown but then up close you get all this So this is part of my Sweet Georgia ambassadorship package, which is awesome. So that's lovely. Thank you so much. I've got some more yarn coming to me. I'm obsessed with their party of fives. I bought two of their party of fives um, when I was in Canada. When I, I think I was in Bad Anna's in Vancouver and I bought the party of fives and I've wanted to do something with them for ages, but there's just like, I just needed another one. <laughs> So I got another set and I also got um, a shuttle, a boat shuttle for my Ridgehead Loom, which I think is going to speed things up considerably. So I'm delighted with that. Um, yeah, they're like, they're an Ashford reseller in Canada. So if you're interested, I definitely have a little look on their website. If you want to have a look at anything that that I'm showing or I'm talking about, about Sweet Georgia, because I am an ambassador for their business, I get a little link, a special link, which you can find down below in the show notes. And I get a little kickback um, if you go through on my link, uh, if you go and buy something through that, through that link. So um, it doesn't cost you any extra, but it just gives me a tiny little percentage, which I really appreciate. And I, thank you so much to the people who have used that link already. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's really, <laughs> I don't know, it just makes me really like, <laughs> but I love what they do so much. Their colours are so beautiful. And um, yeah, they've got a, a whole bunch of beautiful crochet patterns that I'm just like dying to get my teeth into because I really want to get back into crochet. <sighs> but then I also really want to start 
doing all the knits and I also need to spin everything and I also have a wedding to plan. Bah! But anyway, beautiful stuff going on at the moment. Head over there if you want to have a look and if you want to use my little link, please do. I'd appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the next thing I want to spin is um, Grouse. So this is Tea Party in Polworth and Silk. And this one is Grouse in Polworth and Silk. And I already have it all um, split up. And unfortunately, I didn't take a picture of it in the round when I first started it. So I might contact Felicia and be like, can I get a picture of Grouse already, like, in the braid all round up so I can do that before and after thing because it works so nice. Let me show you a picture of this with that. Isn't that so effective? Like you can really see how it's going to spin up but of course every everyone spins differently so it will be different but it's really an interesting reference so I might do that since I pulled this apart before taking that picture. So gross at myself. But this is a beautiful Polworth and Silk again. I just love these moody, deep colours and just these intense brights. Love it. So this is Grouse. This is my 100% favourite colourway that Sweet Georgia does. Ha! Huh? I mean, I'm so on brand. I mean, this is a bit brighter, but I... Mm. This is the stuff I would dream of dyeing. So I have started spinning it. So this is what it is coming out as. So I I was going to do the fractal, but then I split it up and I'm just pulling randomly out of the bag now. I'm not worrying about it. And I, I am tossing up the idea of using it as a, I was going to use it as a weft, use the hand spun as the weft. And I have a, um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. I have a this <laughs> and this is one of their winter colors um their winter collection and this is the color evening and it is this really deep kind of navy with splashes of purples teals oh that teal <gasps> it's to die for so yeah, this is in their Tough Love sock base. So I was thinking about using this as the warp because it's super strong, it's mill spun. But I kind of really want to see these colours pop against that and use that as the weft. A dark weft on a light warp. I don't know, I think I'm really interested in... I'm really interested in how in warp faced fabrics um, when I'm weaving because this was the plan for this all along was to do weave woven projects. So I want to have a so that is what I want to weave with. So you see the green in this it's going to get picked up on this and there's a green like a, the teal on that is going to get picked up down there. I am so excited about this. It's going to be so moody moody and delicious so yes so I'm thinking I might do because I was going to do these as a weft the, the hand spun because they're a little bit more fragile like they're not as consistent so but I spun this really tight like the ply is quite tight you can see the active twist on there so I think it's strong enough and I'm doing the same on this one because it seems to be just my habit now and um yeah so I think I'm gonna stripe them you know, like a couple here, a couple there. I think I might do random stripes and then use this as the weft because it's this beautiful dark colour, um, which would be really nice. It would make these colours pop. Mm, yes, that's going to happen. <sighs> I think I want more of this, though. I think I need an entire jumper in this. It's like a peacocky colour. So this is evening, this is the dye lot. Oh, there's lots of numbers. I'm not going to talk about those numbers. <laughs> and this is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 425 yards, 388 metres per four, four, four ounces or 115 grams. So... So I think I'm spinning up to a, a sport. I always go to a sport. This might be even a DK, which kind of makes sense because if I'm going to do, if I want it warp faced, 
we're talking about weaving now, sorry. We have been talking about weaving for a few minutes. Um, if we're going to do it warp faced, then you, and you want that to show, you need the yarn you want to see in a thicker weight. If you, if you have a choice, like, um, you want it in a thicker weight and then this one in a thinner weight so that this one will show more. Although that's a little bit, but I want to show the colors that I spun as well, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's that plan. So there's another entry for the smile. If I ever get my act in gear, I've only got a month to go. Less than a month. Oh my God. So yeah, that's that. Um, that is what is currently on my spinning wheel. Um, so since we're talking about weaving, I want to show you a finished object. And not just a scarf. <laughs> this is a tunic. And it is made out of the Billium Billum Billum yarns in the in the woolen colorway. Oh my gosh, and there's chocolate on it already. Oh, I'm not shocked. That's fine. Um, so this is, I'll put it on so you can see what it looks like. This is a pattern that is uh, made specifically for rigid head looms. So they deal with long strips, where to cut your fabric, everything like that. And it is from um, Sarah from Get Weaving on Etsy. And it's pattern number GW. DR002 and I'll put that on the screen here so you can see or down below I'll probably just put it down below I've already written it out in the show notes that'll be easier so this is my tunic so ignore the little bit of chocolate because I was wearing it on the retreats <laughs> oops what's that do you want to come in oh hi toast do you want to say hi I think you do just one more hello hello miss oh lovely you just need to chill out for two seconds chill out for two seconds oh look at you oh look at you okay go now no you're not allowed in no you're not me okay so this is the pattern the get weaving pattern oops i've just gone a circle and there's yarn everywhere and if cat if a kitten was in here she'd be on it like a car bonnet so and i think it goes with my with my sweet legs tights as well thanks laura um yeah so I normally wear this with a bit of a belt um just because it's otherwise it's a bit of a like a shift shift dress and that's what it's supposed to be it also the pattern also has an option to sew in a band on, behind it and have a little bit of a ribbon or something underneath and it kind of does this invisible tuck thing which is nice as well I could take it in the sides but I don't want to hide all the work I've done so do I have a piece of string? <laughs> do I? Do I have a piece of string? Nope. Ugh. Let's try this bit. Oh, okay. All right. What's happening there? Okay. Now. Ow, I hurt my hand. So, I'll just show you what it looks like with the tied in. So, pop a little belt on, just pop it down there, and you look a bit like a, a peasant. Pop it up here, and it's like a pregnancy top. It's perfect for all occasions. <laughs> Medieval peasant and pregnancy. That's all you want. What else would you want? What else would you want to wear? So... <laughs> So that is my, um, and I spun this, or I, I didn't spin it, sorry. I, I bought the yarn at Woolen and I wove it on my rigid heddle loom. I wove it on my 16 inch rigid heddle loom, which you can see just here. This is an Ashford 16 inch rigid heddle loom, if I say it any more times. <laughs> and it is super pretty. The Ashford sign is on the other side. Oops. There you go. There it is. Um, yeah, so this was approximately three and a half meters long, maybe three, three meters, 60 centimeters. 
and I cut it in four pieces and then I cut the front piece according to the pattern and then there was it, it, I bought the pattern from Etsy and it came as a paper pattern so I was able to lay it out and match up the shoulder seams and do all of that business I did top seaming little top stitching there I did facing everything's faced I just need to tack that facing down I suppose if that's what you call it and I'm not very much of a sewist so when you're cutting your hand weaves, your hand woven fabric, you do need to interface it just to prevent any sort of unraveling. So that's what I did here. I um, cut the fabric and you can see the web threads just there, but I sewed it all together and I have iron on um, woven, fab woven interfacing. It's really light. It's lovely stuff. Um, I really like it. And then I did the same at the bottom when I was turning it over. Now I I um I think I need to iron it a little bit or I might need to interface the whole thing to make it nice and sturdy and make it last. Um when I have the kittens in my hands, they do tend to it, it's a bit loose. Um I'm terrified to throw it in the wash. <laughs> so I don't wanna. <laughs> So um, yeah, there are just a few little tacking stitches that I did just there. And I have a few little tacking stitches just here as well. So um, I suppose I have tacked it down then, but not very, maybe I just need to cut that out that way maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, so these are my selvage edges. So they look lovely because that's just the edge of the fabric. Um, I didn't cut into them at all. Um, so and that's the same on that side but I did no I didn't cut into the edges on the on the sleeves I just folded them back I just rolled them back and did like just a little hem so that was really it's just really neat and tidy and when I was um sewing down this top stitch I rolled it back a little bit so this this part rolled over so you couldn't see that blue um I think I saw that Maybe in Kristen, the Vullenvine podcast, she's a really excellent sewer. She's been sewing for ages and ages and ages. So I, uh, or maybe actually it was um, Katie of number 23, inside number 23. Um, she does a lot of sewing as well. So uh, thank you so much, ladies, for your inspiration. Um, so yeah, really simple shift dress. And that is from Sarah from Get Weaving on Etsy. And that is linked down below as well. Ta-da! That's my little weaving dress. Now, the next thing I have on my loom is 100% silk from North East India from a company called Mwesart, who have the most fascinating Instagram. Um, yeah, so this is my silk. I ordered, I placed an order on their website, super easy to navigate. I have bought from India before and it has been a bit difficult because I had to do a bank transfer and I had to go into the bank and physically like fill out loads of things because it was not within the EU. So it was like difficult to, they had to get like a joining bank in the house. It was a mess to be honest, but this website is so easy to use. It's all in US dollars. Um, so it's, it was just transferred once, like I just got, um, currency fees just once. Oh, so that was nice. Um, but the yarn is an incredible value for the, um, for what they do really. Um, the hand spun yarn was something like $28 per hundred grams. $28 per hundred grams. Hand spun 100% silk, airy silk. Um, that and then so what I have on the warp is a um, is the mill spun cotton or mill sorry not cotton mill spun silk so it is um, just a little bit stronger and then on the weft is all of the hand spun so you can see it's and then I have actually got I've been putting in little little bits of um, unspun roving just for a little bit of texture now I've got I've got approximately five meters on this. Um, it's a lot. 
and it's taken and the handspun is very thin so it's taking me a long time and also I've been knitting on the starflake shawl so I haven't really been sitting down to to weave with this um so I'm finding it really interesting I'm I'm just using just a simple plain tabby weave and I think I love it it's all about texture I've kept it all white I didn't dye anything I've kept it all white so I'm really interested in the different textures so what I might start doing is a little bit of pickup stick work I might try um, a window pane weave and I might try some um, some floats um, and I might do some Brooks bouquet um, some just textured weaving so that's kind of fascinating so I might be trying to do that it's very interesting this is the shuttle and as you can see it's kind of pilling a tiny bit and it's sticking a little bit here and that's because it's kind of rubbing back and forth and silk it's so interesting so this is airy silk. Airy silk is a shorter staple than commercial silk because they allow the moth to eat its way out of the cocoon and fly off and live its life. Um, so the moth is actually cut through the silk fibres, so the fibres are a lot shorter, which means that it's still like very long, but it's just not as long as silk normally is. Um, this is actually a cocoon. So I got cocoons, I got sliver, I got the mill spun and I got the hand spun. Once I started, I couldn't stop. So this is some a part of the cocoon just here. And then when you pull it out, so see the little bits there. So I was actually, I was spinning, I was hand spinning some of this and it spins so well. Literally, I'm just gonna hook it in with one of my spindles. Like. If that was a short staple length, that would be, that would have fallen instantly. Like, it is beautiful. So I'm just playing with it now. I love the way it pulls out. So this is the way most of the women actually spin on spindles, although some of them do have wheels now. They have uh, they have invested in some wheels just to up production, which is great um, because it just means that, that they get more, um, more time to do it and they get more yarn out. And it's faster and satisfying when you've got a wheel and you've been doing it by hand for so long. Although some of the women, they say that they prefer doing it by hand because they can wander around, you know, they can take care of their kids and do all their business while spinning. So it's more suitable for their life, but they do it whichever way they feel like it. It's fascinating. And you know, the best thing about that, uh, the uh, Instagram is just, you can literally just see where it's coming from. Like you can see the women just having breakfast or having a chat, or you can see the farmers, the silk farmers. Um, it's all just transparency, you know. I love it. And with the internet, like, it's so easy to just keep in contact. So, I think they were featured in Yarn People magazine as well. But I'm really, so you can, I'm just spinning straight from the cocoon. Just straight from the cocoon. I think I prefer it. I prefer spinning this way to the sliver because the sliver has been prepared by a machine um, and I think the fibres have actually been cut to um, fit into the machine properly, just to, to be spun by the machine. And it's not as easy. Um, they come in these really lovely packages as well. So this is Airy Silk Sliver. 100 grams natural undyed silk fiber for spinning, blending and felting and more. This protein fiber is fantastic for dyeing and this is a ready to spin fiber. But I find that the fibers are a lot shorter. Like, yeah. I've just pulled it and it's pulled out just like that. So they are a lot shorter because they probably have been processed by the machines 
and uh, yeah so if you were going to get this for hand spinning I probably unless you're used to spinning with short fibers I would go for the silk cocoons um they're really nice to spin um I think you probably would get a more consistent yarn with this and maybe you could spin off the tip maybe on a charka or um a supported spindle long draw maybe this is nice actually I've put it into lots of row legs which is lovely because you can blend it up with other wools like longer staple wools and that's really nice um, and it gives a lovely sheen but um, yeah like I spinning from the cocoons is actually the easiest way for me to spin with this particular uh, fiber if I'm going to be spinning with it so I'm spinning with it, I am weaving with it, and I am in love with it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Like, it's just so easy. It just pulls and pulls and pulls. I kind of love that sound as well. I kind of love these little knobbly bits. So I'm going to be hand spinning some and putting it into the weaving as well. So, so it seems here I am at it so that might be true um yeah so what else have I got to show you um, um anything else no I think I'm done Do you know it took me a long time to get back into it just because I was like I'm not very good at the giveaways, that's the problem. I don't get a lot of time to post out parcels, so often my parcels are posted out very late, like they could be two weeks, three weeks, a month, until I get to the to the post office. So um, just be aware of that if you, if you are one of the winners, that it might be a little while. I'll hopefully get them out to you for Christmas, but maybe not, uh, depending on where you live, like if you're in New Zealand or Australia, it could take ages. <laughs> um yeah so that's all I had in my show notes so that's I think all I have at the moment so I am heading to Barcelona in a couple of weeks definitely if you see me please come up and say hello I love seeing people you'll get a big hug unless you say oh no I'm fine with a hug but I just you know I just want to say hi I'm like oh okay that's fine I'm a bit I get a bit high a bit high so my so I'm told <laughs> high and loud but sure would you have me any other way I don't think so so I love you lots and uh, do enter for the for the patterns and I will see you next time not gonna say next week next time Bye.